filing show that Brian Koberger's attorney say he was, quote, out driving when the four students were killed last November. We talk about a grand jury indictment. We always say it's so easy to come back with an indictment from a grand jury because all they really need to show is probable cause. Last fall says he was out driving alone at the time of the murders with no way to provide exact details for his whereabouts. They're saying it says that the jury needs to find that the evidence, if, if it went to trial, warrant a conviction. This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. Hello, Reporter Room investigators. We have a lot of stuff to get into. We're going to be talking about Brian Kohlberger and Taylor, and let's dig into all of this. Today, we're going to be discussing what Dylan actually heard and saw through the affidavit, Kaylee's father's bombshell claim that there are connections between Kaylee and Brian Kohlberger. We're also going to be talking about another link to Brian Kohlberger, but let's begin with Dylan and then dive into the proof that there are connections between Brian Kohlberger and at least one of the victims on Brian's phone via an ID found amongst Brian's things and Kaylee's dad's jaw-dropping assertions that Brian has connections to Kaylee. Everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone. Let's be kind to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up so I know you were here. I'm going to be sharing facts with some speculation. I'm going to be very clear about what is fact and what is speculation in an effort to provide you with well-researched coverage. Let's begin with Dylan and then we'll move on to the ID linking Brian to one of the victims and then we're going to address the bombshell claims made by Kaylee's father about Brian's connection to his daughter Kaylee. First, the affidavit is not Dylan's entire statement. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Dylan has not had her chance to speak because both she and Bethany have been stuck under a court-imposed gag order. Now, authorities are sharing a few words that they are attributing to Dylan through their affidavit, but this is just the tip of the iceberg of what her testimony is most likely going to be. Now, we're going to do a deep dive into connections that Kaylee's dad says that Brian had with his daughter Kaylee in just a moment, so please stay with me. Some people are frustrated at the lack of information regarding what the roommates Dylan and Bethany actually saw and did that eight hour time gap. And because of that tiny snippet of information that we all read in the affidavit, many people think that that's the whole statement. But we will hear from both roommates during the trial, I would expect beginning October the 2nd and Reporter Room will be streaming this trial so please hit the notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss it. This is going to be a wonderful opportunity for all of us to connect with each other daily while we follow this case. Now with that said let's go through what we do know from the affidavit about what Dylan allegedly saw and said and I'm saying allegedly because her words are coming through an affidavit and not directly from Dylan's own lips. Also welcome to the hundreds of new subscribers to Reporter Room. We are so happy you are joining the Reporter Room family. Please allow me a moment to clear something up and then I want to dig into all of this important information together with you. Reporter Room does use journalistic resources in both research and in Reporter Room videos. This means that I use media resources and this channel is called Reporter Room, so hopefully this isn't a big shock to most people. For the minority who don't believe in using media as a resource, I'm not really sure where you would expect me as a journalist to get my sources from. I do look at the affidavits, but this is a journalistic channel and lawyer channels. They're going to bring information from a legal point of view 
and law enforcement, they're going to bring you information from a police point of view. Psychologists are going to bring you information from a mental health point of view. And journalists like me are going to bring information from a journalistic point of view. And I hope this clarifies the point of view that reporter room is coming from. We are a critical thinkers channel. So let's dig into Dylan a little bit more. And then I want to get into those bombshell claims by Kaylee's father about that link between Kaylee and Brian. And I have proof. So in an affidavit, Moscow police say that one roommate identified in the document as DM, we now know that that was Dylan, was woken up at approximately 4 a.m by sounds coming from upstairs, including what she thought she heard Kaylee saying, quote, there's someone here. As I shared with you, the last video I posted, I discussed the photos that link Brian to one of the victims. And I believe that Kaylee was in her own room playing with Murphy the dog at this time. And I'm going to give you a speculation trigger warning here. If speculation bothers you, then you will want to skip over this part of the video. I believe Kaylee was in her own bedroom while Maddie slept in her own room. I think Kaylee couldn't sleep. She had been trying to get a hold of Jack Decor. She was up playing with her dog Murphy, and I think she heard someone coming up the stairs. I believe she came out of her room closed her bedroom door behind her, leaving Murphy the dog in Kaylee's bedroom. And I believe she tried to warn Maddie by saying, quote, there's someone here. So this lines up with what Dylan reportedly heard regarding someone playing with a dog and Dylan hearing someone say upstairs, there's someone here. This accounts for the fact that Murphy survived unharmed and that no evidence was found on this dog. This theory also accounts for the fact that Dylan heard Kaylee upstairs playing with Murphy. This theory also accounts for the fact that Dylan thought she heard Kaylee say, quote, there's someone here. Now, the speculation is over. Let's return back to the affidavit. DM, we know that's Dylan, looked out her bedroom but didn't see anything, after which she heard more noises. And she told investigators she heard crying, a male voice saying, it's okay, I'm going to help you. More voices, a loud thud, and a dog barking. Here is another speculation trigger warning. I believe that the male voice that Dylan heard was the perpetrator, although there's no way Dylan would have known at the time that somebody was doing away with her roommates. She could have just thought that Ethan and Zana had a disagreement. And I don't think hearing loud thumping sounds and the dog barking would have been that unusual. I mean, Kaylee was probably up playing with the dog earlier and the dog was probably excited and barking. So let's return to the affidavit and then we're going to discuss Kaylee's dad's assertions regarding that connection between Brian and Kaylee and information that Brian also had in his possession, a victim's ID, yet another connection between victims and Brian. So Dylan opened her door. This is according to the affidavit. And this time she saw, quote, a figure clad in black clothing and a mask walking toward her with bushy eyebrows. This is according to the affidavit. It was a male stranger. She described him as being at least five foot, 10 inches, quote, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows, end quote. Now let's talk about Kaylee's dad. And the rumors that have been going around that Kaylee's dad claimed there was not a connection between Kaylee and Brian. This is not what he said. There are multiple articles quoting what Kaylee's dad actually said. He said that he believed that there was a link between Kaylee and Brian. Quote, Kaylee Gonzalez, father of Kaylee 21, said his family had found connections between the, Idaho, between the University of Idaho student and suspect Brian Kohlberger. It's not yet clear what connection Kohlberger might have had with Kaylee, but the crime scene was just eight miles away from where he was studying criminology. Steve, that's Kaylee's dad, described Brian as a quote, broken soul, pitiful human being, and the little coward that had finally got caught running. 
Moreover, police have said that they believe that Brian carried out these November 13th slayings and that he did this alone. Multiple profilers have said that it is possible to have done this. In fact, Ted Bundy did it in less time than what Brian is being accused of doing. So, quote, the developments come as Steve Gonzalez, father of Kaylee, said his family has been digging up clues linking her with suspect Brian Kohlberger. Kaylee's father, Steve, told ABC News that they found links between the suspect, Brian, and Kaylee, but are not ready to discuss them yet as the police investigation continues. And now I think we understand why the police were so anxious to keep family members under a gag order. So let's address the photos that Brian had on his cell phone of one of the victims. This was widely reported in February by multiple news outlets. Feel free to pause the video and write down the names of the media outlets who published the story. I'm going to also share who claimed Brian did not have a connection to one of the victims in just a moment. So please stay with me. So now here are the news articles. We have reports of Brian Kohlberger messaging victims on Instagram. Another link, this is link number three. We have the photo of a victim on Brian's cell phone. We have Kaylee's father, who we know hired his own attorney and private investigator saying that he believed there were links between Kaylee and Brian. And now we have, we have reports of Brian Kohlberger messaging victims on Instagram. Also, feel free to pause the video, write down the names of the articles and read them at your convenience. So who did say that Brian had no connection to the victims? Well, this was claimed by Brian's defense team and the story was published in the New York Post. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Please subscribe.